In this video, we're looking at destructive interferences on a couple specific wavelengths of light through two different coatings on a crown glass lens. So this starts to give you a sense for what happens when you stack thin films. You can tune these thin films to kill many wavelengths of light. So on our outermost layer, we have magnesium fluoride, and we're told that has an index of refraction of 1.41. Under that, we have a zinc sulfide layer with a very large index of refraction of 2.20. And then the crown glass itself has an index of refraction of 1.52. By assumption here, that's air outside the magnesium fluoride thin film, and that has an index of refraction of approximately 1. Now to keep track of things, I'm going to refer to the magnesium fluoride, that's the outermost layer, as material number 1. The zinc sulfide is material number 2. And so I'm told that I want my magnesium fluoride layer to cause destructive interference on the reflection of 600 nanometer lights. And the first thing that we have to do is find the wavelength of that 600 nanometer light inside the magnesium fluoride layer. And I'm going to call that lambda 1 prime. And I'll post a link back to the video where all this thin film math was first introduced. But it turns out the wavelength of the light in the material is going to be given by the wavelength in air or vacuum. That's our 600 divided by the index of refraction of the material. When I do that calculation, I get 425.5 nanometers. Then I start thinking about the reflections at the upper surface of this thin film and at the interface with the next thin film. And so our first reflection is phase shifted at the reflection. And that's because it's a transition from a faster medium into a slower medium for the light. My second reflection, that's light that penetrated through the thin film and is now reflecting off the interface with the zinc sulfide. That's also phase shifted by the reflection, and the reason why, again, is because I went from a faster material into a slower material. So both of these reflected rays are phase shifted. The other thing that may cause a phase shift is the path length difference that's caused by the second reflection traveling all the way through the thin film and back out again. And I'm going to call the thickness of this first film T1. So that second reflection has an extra distance of 2T1 to travel. And because both reflections caused a phase shift, I need to get my reflections back out of phase so that this wavelength of light is going to interfere destructively. So the thinnest film that will get this done is if 2T1, that's the travel length difference for the second reflection, causes a one-half wavelength phase shift. This means my first thickness must be the wavelength of the light in the material over 4. And I've got the thickness from my first thin film. That's 106 nanometers. Next, we're going to look at reflections off of that zinc sulfide layer. And we want 500 nanometer light to interfere destructively off of that. And to prepare ourselves, we need to compute the wavelength of our original light, which was 600 nanometers. So that's going to be lambda over 2.20. I get 500 over 2.20, which comes out to 227.3 nanometers. Then I want to visualize both reflections, and I already have the first one. It was this phase-shifted reflection off of the interface between the magnesium fluoride and the zinc sulfide. And then I have some light that is transmitted through the zinc sulfide layer and reflects off the interface with the crown glass. And this is a slow to fast transition. The light is actually speeding up. The crown glass has a smaller index of refraction than the zinc sulfide layer. So at that reflection, I get no phase shift. So just a quick note, at the very end of the instructions, it says, assume the zinc sulfide layer cannot be made ultra thin. So there's a section at the end of my original thin film interference video about ultra thin films. And when I have this fast to slow to fast kind of transition, if I just make the thickness of the film significantly less than the wavelength of the light that I'm using, it will interfere destructively on all wavelengths. And I can see why, because one reflection is phase shifted and the other is not phase shifted. Those will be pretty much out of phase if I make the film extremely thin. I'm talking five or 10 nanometers. So we're assuming that in the manufacturing process, this is not possible. So we want the next thickness that causes destructive interference on 500 nanometer light. So we're gonna look at the thickness of the zinc sulfide, and we'll call that T2. And the extra travel distance for the second reflection is 2 times T2. And because these two reflections are already out of phase, what we want is the right travel distance to not mess with the phase at all. 
And the smallest way to get that done, the smallest thickness that gets it done, is if the extra travel distance is exactly one wavelength. So both reflections are going to emerge out of phase and we interfere destructively. So we get T2 is lambda 2 prime over 2. Again, what matters is the wavelength of the light within the medium. And when I run the numbers on this, I get 114 nanometers for that film. And we're done. If you find the physics content on Zach's lab helpful, click on the Zach's lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month, and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.